Hey everyone, I'm Jordan Spivey, joined with my dad, Travis Spivey, and if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of our awesome science videos. And today's video, we will explore the carbon cycle and its importance to all life on Earth, so, so let's, let's do this. this. Our learning targets for today are, number one, I can explain how carbon is cycled through the living and non-living parts of the environment. Number two, I can explain the importance of the cycling of carbon through the living and non-living parts of the environment. We know trees are great at storing carbon, but where does it come from and where does it go? Let's explore the carbon cycle to find out more. All life on Earth contains carbon and carbon is constantly moving from one part of the planet to another through a process called the carbon cycle. So let's start off with a key question. What is the importance of carbon? Carbon is an essential element for all life forms on Earth. Whether these life forms take in carbon to help manufacture food through the process of photosynthesis or release carbon as a part of cellular respiration, the intake and output of carbon is an essential component of all plant and animal life on Earth to make energy for themselves to survive. Next question, where is carbon stored? Carbon is in a constant state of movement from place to place. It is stored in what are known as reservoirs, and it moves between these reservoirs through a variety of processes, including photosynthesis, burning fossil fuels, and simply releasing breath from our lungs during cellular respiration. The movement of carbon from reservoir to reservoir is known as the carbon cycle. Carbon can be stored in a variety of reservoirs, including plants and animals, which is why they are considered carbon life forms. Carbon is used by plants to build leaves and stems, which are then digested by animals and used for cellular growth. In the atmosphere, carbon is stored in the form of gases such as carbon dioxide. It is also stored in oceans and captured by many types of marine organisms. Some organisms such as clams or coral use the carbon to form shells and skeletons. Most of the carbon on the planet is contained within rocks, minerals, and other sediment buried beneath the surface of the planet. With that being said, let's start off with where a large amount of the planet's carbon is and or was stored in the fossil fuels, oil, coal, and natural gas. Millions of years ago, organisms containing carbon such as trees and ocean dwelling creatures died and were buried. Because these organisms were buried, they weren't able to decompose properly. Over millions of years, the pressure from being buried under tons of material meant that these organisms were turned into fossil fuels. As we burn these fossil fuels, we release carbon that has been stored in the earth for millions of years into the atmosphere as carbon dioxide. This means we are adding extra carbon to the carbon cycle which would otherwise have remained stored in the earth. Two questions. First, how did fossil fuels originate or begin? Second, what happens when we burn fossil fuels? Let's take an even closer look at how and why carbon is stored in plants and trees. Plants and trees store carbon in their trunks, leaves, and roots. Every day, tons of carbon dioxide, also known as CO2, is released into the atmosphere. Plants remove one-fourth or 25% of this carbon dioxide by photosynthesis, using the energy of the sun to create sugars from the carbon and releasing oxygen as a byproduct. Basically, plants use the carbon from the atmosphere to make food for themselves in the form of glucose sugars so they can survive. They give off oxygen which is vital for the survival of humans and other animals. An incredible 600 billion tons of carbon are thought to be stored in land plants alone. This number doesn't even include the marine plants in the ocean. Question: Why is it a win-win situation for plants and humans when plants take in carbon dioxide? Let's take a closer look at carbon stored in the atmosphere. The atmosphere holds around 750 billion tons of carbon, mainly as carbon dioxide. Human activities such as burning fossil fuels and deforestation or cutting down trees is contributing to what most scientists agree are dangerously high levels of carbon dioxide into our atmosphere. Cutting down large areas of forests is a problem as trees would otherwise have helped to remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Human activities have increased the concentration of carbon dioxide in our atmosphere, which has greatly increased Earth's natural greenhouse effect leading to global warming. Question: Why are burning fossil fuels and deforestation a bad thing as it relates to carbon and Earth's greenhouse effect? Next question, how does carbon go from one place to another? Carbon is transferred through the many different processes including photosynthesis, respiration, burning of fossil fuels, and a couple of other processes. Let's look at how carbon moves by analyzing the following diagram of the carbon cycle. It is important to know that carbon doesn't move in a step-by-step -step circular path, but in several different ways and forms. Also remember that all organic or living things contain carbon. For ease of explanation of the carbon cycle in this diagram, 
We'll start at the top with the carbon dioxide cycle and sunlight. Sunlight and carbon dioxide is taken in from the atmosphere by plants to help fuel the process of photosynthesis so they can make glucose sugars food for themselves. Carbon is stored in plants and trees through photosynthesis. Decay organisms are organisms that have died, decomposed, and their nutrients have been returned back to the soil where plants and trees can absorb these nutrients. These decay organisms contain carbon in them that is either absorbed by plants or other organisms that feed on them. Herbivores and other consumers feed on plants and trees and take in the organic carbon stored within the leaves and other parts of the plants and trees. Dead organisms and waste products from these dead organisms are stored deep within the soil over millions of years and turned into fossil fuels. Ocean uptake takes in carbon from the atmosphere and stores it in marine plants, animals, and rock sediment. Animal, plant, and root respiration occur when animals, plants, and roots respire or breathe out some of the carbon compounds to make energy for themselves. Plant and root respiration occur at night when photosynthesis has stopped. Animal, plant, and root respiration return some of the carbon back to the atmosphere when they breathe out. Burning of fossil fuels through auto and factory emissions release the carbon in oil, coal, and natural gas back into the atmosphere. Because Earth is a closed system, the amount of carbon on the planet never changes. However, the amount of carbon in a specific reservoir can change over time as carbon moves from one reservoir to another. For example, some carbon in the atmosphere might be captured by plants to make food during photosynthesis. This carbon can then be ingested and stored in animals that eat the plants. When the animals die, they decompose and the remains become sediment, trapping the stored carbon in layers that eventually turn into rock or minerals. Some of this sediment might form fossil fuels such as coal, oil, or natural gas, which release carbon back into the atmosphere when the fuel is burned. The carbon cycle is vital to life on Earth. Nature tends to keep carbon levels balanced, meaning that the amount of carbon naturally released from reservoirs is equal to the amount that is naturally absorbed by reservoirs. Maintaining this carbon balance allows the planet to remain a place suitable for life. Scientists believe that humans have upset this balance by burning fossil fuels, which has added more carbon to the atmosphere than usual and led to greater global warming. If the temperatures rise too high then, well, Stay tuned for that answer in our global warming video. And that's our video for today. Now let's set your knowledge to see how proficient you are with explaining how and the importance of the cycle and the carbon through the living and long living parts of our environment by taking our video quiz. Use your electronic device to scan the QR code at the bottom right of the screen, or you can click the link in the description box below the video to take the quiz. Remember, 80% are higher for proficiency, record your associate proficiency sheet, and, and if you, you don't, don't get it the first time, time you, you better, better keep going because it's not over until you win. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and also click that bell icon so you don't miss out on any of our awesome videos. Peace and have a positive and productive day. Give me the box. No.